Hi everyone, so I'm back again to do another video for you and what I'm going to do today is I'm going to do a gardenia. Now that's the picture of the one that I'm going to do. I have actually made some up before and this is one that I've done already and this is one called uh, I can't remember what it is, something star it's called, I can't remember what the full title of it is. I should have looked it up before I started and I didn't, so I apologise for that. But if you look up gardenias on um, on the internet, on Google, uh, you can see all the different varieties they are. Some are more closed and some are more open. The one that I'm doing is the back petals are quite open. As you've probably noticed, or maybe not, I'll show you again at the end, there's a little bit of green on the edge of the petals, the back petals and the reason for that is because that would have formed the bud originally. So anyway, we'll get on with it. Right, so the cutters that I'm using for this are uh, these cutters here. Uh, these I bought specially online uh, from China. <laughs> I don't always buy from China but if it's something I can't get over here or something I, I can't find then sometimes I will but you've got to wait forever for them to come that's the problem depending on where in the world you are and and then also the I got a, they do a set of uh, leaves as well this is the Vena and these are the cutters for the uh, leaves uh, that one goes that way up um, I'm only going to, there is actually a smaller one with this as well and I've put it around somewhere on here, behind and underneath something. Um, but I'm not going to use the small one because uh, I'm going to do the specimen flower, which basically, you can only see the tips of the leaves, it's just basically so you've got something behind, so it's more of a corsage than a spray that I was going to do because that would be a hell of a big spray for a cake. So, I'm going to start off with the petals. To get rid of that there now and the center of the um, of the flower now first of all what you need to do for the center is um, you need a little piece for the uh, all your petals to attach to so a small ball of paste oops then roll that into a sausage you can put a bit of glue on your wire if you want but this paste I'm using is quite sticky so this should stick on here and not come off. Onto the top of your a 20 gauge wire and then thin it down top and bottom and that's all you need. Unlike a rose you don't need a massive bulb inside, it's just something to attach your paste to. Put that to one side to dry. So I've got one here that's already dry. So I'm just going to pop that to one side and I'm going to roll out some white paste. The only problem with this paste that I've made here is that it's not completely white, it's a little bit creamy uh, and I don't know why, whether it's the egg whites or not, I don't know. Uh, I've not made it before, it's the first time I've made it, but I probably would put some um, white extra into it to make it really white if when I do this again. But since in most cases, apart from this flower, most of the ones that I'm doing are going to be coloured anyway, you're not really going to see the white paste, so... Unless you're doing something like lilies that have got part colour on or something like that, it doesn't really matter. Or orchids or anything like that. Right, so I've rolled the paste out quite thinly and I'm going to cut out seven petals. And then I'm going to cut out an extra one. The reason I'll explain in a minute why I've cut out seven and one. Because um, I work fairly fast so I can cut out all my petals at once. But this is one of those flowers where I'd suggest that it might be easier for you to cut your petals out in advance and let them stiffen up a little bit before you do it so they don't flop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them onto my pad. You need to thin your edges first before you start putting them into your vena. I'll just bring that onto there. And then with your ball tool or dog bone tool or whatever else it is you're using, uh, thin your edges. So it's half on and half off. 
don't drift in, otherwise you end up with a, a ridge in that, around the outside and a thick edge, so you don't want that, you want it to be really thin on the edges. That's so you take off the uh, cut edge of the, of the paste. When you're working with this paste as well, because it's quite sticky at first, you best rubbing some white fat onto your hands first before you need it. I'd already needed this paste, so I didn't need to do that. But when you bring it out and you've not used, you've not needed it before, then um, adding some white paste, some uh, vegetable fat helps to stop it from sticking to your hands and it also helps you to knead it well so that it's workable. Right, so the next step is we're going to put them into the vena. This part I have to go through all the petals. Normally I only do one of each petal and then uh, I've already got some ready to go on. But uh, for the sake of this particular flower I need to show you this right from the word go. It's a different kind of veining to uh, the sort of veining we use when I use the uh, silt veining tool or a rose petal vein or anything like that. It's, uh, there's a lot more tiny little veins in it. Which, if I show you one of the gardenias that I've done, because these have been dusted with a lot of stuff, I don't know whether you can see the veining in that. You can see how, how much veining there is in that flower. It stands out more, wet. that's why I've used the lustre dust on plain flowers like that. I use the lustre dust because it makes the veining stand out more so you can see it. Plus it also gives you petals, that sort of uh, waxy look you get with some flowers as well. Some petals, particularly things like um, orchids and uh, the more fleshy type flowers, you get that sort of waxy look on it and I quite often use luster dust for that to get that effect and then when you've steamed it that makes it stand out even more. There's quite a few flowers that I've done on here that I've used the uh, luster dust on. If you go back to my hellebore vein uh, I use luster dust on that. Seems to have been one of my more popular vi um, videos. A lot of people have watched that. So that's when I was doing my Christmas flowers up to uh, Christmas time. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I've... I um, don't think I've got a dry one in that. No, I haven't got a dry one left. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the first petal onto this, but I have got one that's already dry that I can use to add the rest to. So what I'm going to do is take the first petal and then I'm going to glue about three quarters of that what you want to do is get your centre onto the edge and then start getting your, your petal attached to one side like that and then roll, roll it on. It wants to come a bit further down. And it's like a rosebud, you want it to go right the way around because you don't want to see that centre piece when you've got everything done so keep rolling it around like that and then tuck it all in at the bottom. That. and if it hasn't gone quite round, far enough round get a cell stick or something like that and just go in and just pull it round so it twists round the petals on the centre of these are like a spiral so it depends on which way you want to do them I've seen various different ways because I done this morning some of the other videos and there's, everybody's got their own way of doing it this is just mine so uh, it's up to you to compare with all the videos that you see and find out which is the best one for you. So what you need to do now is you need to put that one to one side to dry. I've already got one here that has dried. Unfortunately I've done it on too thin a wire so I need to put, before I start, I need to put a thicker wire onto that one. And I should have done what I did in the first place. Is that dry? Oh, I've got one here that's already dry that's on a thicker wire. Don't need that one. No, no we don't 
do want that one. I'm talking to yourself again, just ignore me. <laughs> this shows it's real life and it's not dubbed in any way, so uh, please bear with me. I do tend to talk to myself quite a lot. Apart from the, tar the cat and he thinks I'm going mad. He's the only one that's here to listen to me. Or Alexa, of course. Yes, I've got an Alexa. I had problems with my broadband yesterday, so she started chuntering when he switched the broadband off and going through a lot of stuff. I didn't take any notice of what she was saying because she wouldn't shut up. So, uh, <laughs> that's modern technology for you. So I'm just going to tape down with that. It's a little bit difficult when you've only got two wires. Once you get more wires in, you find it a lot easier to uh, tape it all together. Just make sure you stretch with one hand and roll with the other. Right, so I've got that taped on there. I'll just take that bit of tape off there. I'm just going to put that to one side now. Now, pop that down there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue all of the petals. I'm going to do them all in one go because they're all going to go on one after the other. So I'm going to glue about two thirds of the petal. Make sure that the when you're gluing your petals, that it's the front of the petal you glue in because when you've got this sort of veining on you can tell which is the front and the back of your petals so just make sure you do them the right way around unlike me who did one upside down the other day but fortunately it's in the middle of the flower so you can't see it right so the first petal what I'm going to do is I'm going to start that opposite where the height of the petal is there I'm going to start that one opposite there and just wrap that right the way around a bit like when you're doing a rose you do the same thing when you start off. Glue that out, make sure that's well attached, then get your second petal, then that goes halfway across the other one and wrap it round like that. They won't go all the way around as you add them on, they'll uh, come out a little bit further if that makes sense. Once you start doing it, you know we need a bit more glue on that one. That have glue on it. Don't get too much glue on, don't go too high up because if you do, when you come to dust them, it won't take. You'll find you'll have trouble with that. Just slide that up a little bit. Tuck that into the bottom. Next one. And they're all just going to completely go over and they're going to go around in a spiral with these petals. Like that. If I've gone off camera, I apologise, i just realised I've just looked up. When you haven't got a cameraman, it's very difficult to see what the camera sees and what I'm seeing. And wrap round again, like that. So just go around and make sure everything is attached tightly. Like that. And then set that off to one side to dry. Right, so, the next part is I'm going to get some fresh paste here. The problem is with your paste, it does tend to get a bit discoloured when you're handling it all the time. With the oil from your hands, you can see the difference in colour there. So I'm just going to add some fresh paste into that. It's not because your hands aren't clean, because obviously you start off with clean hands. It's just that the oil in your skin affects your paste. And it can, in some cases, depending on what sort of paste you're using, make your, coat, your paste dry out. Some pastes are better than others for not drying out but um, I'm sorry people but I don't like the, the um, Renshaw's flower paste. I've tried both of them, the uh, flower modelling paste that came out first and the new flower paste and I don't like either of them. Your leaves don't stick on your wires with the paste and I don't, the, I found that the flower paste, the new one, dries out too quickly so uh, when I'm working with students I need as much time as possible because they're not going to be as quick as me so um, I have to take things like that into account and because it's cheaper I've always got that one for them but they do have difficulty with it. Right, so once we've done that, on your board 
and start to roll it out. Need a little bit more white fat on that. Just every now and so often, you don't need to put lots, lots of white fat on, you just need enough so that your paste grips the board. So once you start rolling it out, don't lift it off your board, leave it. It's not, you're not rolling out pastry, you're rolling out flour paste, or sugar paste for that matter. You need to be able to lift that up and move it round, but with flour paste it's completely the opposite, you don't want to be taking it off. Roll it fairly thin, but I don't want it too thin because I'm going to use my trusty little uh, groove rolling pin. Try your local sugar craft shop and see if they stock these, if, if not, um, ask them if they can get hold of them. Uh, there will, there's only one firm that I know that does these and uh, that's, um, uh, I'm just trying to think of the name of the firm now, I've got a hair in there, just bear with me a second, uh, Guy Paul. Uh, if they don't deal with Guy Paul, uh, mention it to them and see if they can get them because people like Culpit and firms like that don't seem to stop these. And I'm just going to roll up so that I get a groove. Now, if you're not work used to working with uh, grooves, then uh, you might find the other side of the cell board which has the grooves in it, which are a little bit deeper for anybody that's not sure about what they're doing with. Uh, with those so uh, what you're going to do is I'm only going to do two petals for this because you don't need to watch me cut them all out but for each flower you need six of each size for these so I'm going to cut out a small one and a large one I didn't really need all this paste but I was just showing you that just to show how much you need you could probably get a full set of one size out of that amount of paste when you're doing it this way if you're doing it the other way then just just do a couple of petals at a time don't try and do lots of petals and remember when you roll it out on your groove side of your board don't try and cut it out while it's on the board take it off turn it over so you can see where your bridge is so you know where you're going to put your wire this is the way that I taught all my students because I find that it, uh, it works a lot better that way for them and what I'm going to use here is now I'm using a 26 gauge wire and you need that to go up your groove if you get it between on your first finger and hold it with your thumb you can feel it go up and if it comes through the paste you can feel it and if it does just come come back again and go back in again now it's come out a little bit there now I'm going to do a cheat here don't envisage doing this. If you're doing competitions, don't do this. But because the wire is showing a little bit there, rather than uh, checking it out and doing it all again, I'm just going to put a bit of a tiny little bit of paste down the wire there, like that. So it's not showing. So we want that. Uh, we need another wire cut another piece off. I'm only using quarter length pieces of wire for this for the 26 gauge wire so you cut it in half and then cut it in half again. I just happen to have one already cut out that's why I, uh, I had that there and so obviously out of one wire you're going to get four petals out of that so one and a half wires will do you one layer of petals and three wires do you a full lot, full set of petals. Go as far as you can up your petals for the simple reason that if it breaks for any reason you have an accident it's a lot easier to repair it if it's already on the wire. I've repaired a, a leaf here, I'm not going to use this one but just to show you what I've done it snapped off and so what I've done is I've mixed some the flower paste and the colour that you're using with some of your glue, mix it together down into a very workable amount and then just put some on the back, you can either put it on the edge of your uh, leaves or whatever, um, but normally I wouldn't recommend that, especially if you're doing competitions, don't do that. I know when I've done competitions, sometimes the times I've had to redo things because I'm not happy with it, so it's not going in. Right, so next step is thin your edges again, as before.
put that to one side get the vena now before you put it in because you've got a dip in your vena here uh, what you need to do is get your thumb on top and just bend your wire up so you've got a slight curve on your wire so then it sits into your vena a lot easier and the reason for that is it stops you wire from coming out of your purse pop the top on this is the large one I'm doing here make sure you've got it centralized give it a good press then bring that out and that bit of paste that I put on has disappeared there so what you need to do now is cup the bottom part of your petals here because they're going to have to fit round the centre part because we're going to dry these before we assemble them so onto some foam like I've done here I'll just put that to the side we're not down there got something on the floor put it into your into your foam and you need to get a bit of movement on your petals so if you put it in between your foam like that it holds it in place so what I'll do then is where's the next one there we are that one again your ridge goes at the back as it does with anything leaves or petals or anything like that into your vena make sure your vein is the right way up give it a good press unfortunately this vein goes in whichever way up you put it in it can be easy to put it up the wrong way cup the bottom and then onto your foam and that shapes it like that okay that's the one that I've just put in there that's the soft one right so once you've done that then uh, you need to make some leaves and we'll just get rid of those cutters out of the way and get those out I have already got some green already uh, made up here don't need a lot of kneading because I'd already done this when I uh, did made my uh, bits and pieces for the uh, for this demonstration and again like I did with the flower petals roll it out onto your board the color that I always use at, uh, for this is either holly and ivy from Squire's kitchen or Christmas green from uh, Sugar Flare. It's the same colour from both companies, but that's the one. You don't need any other greens at all because you're going to dust your leaves. It's just whether you put a lot more colour in or less colour in, depending on the leaves that you're doing. Uh, but you don't need loads of different greens. I don't know why manufacturers do so many different ones because you're only going to cover it up with your powder anyway. And some of the greens are not very nice, so uh, I pick the green that I think is the most natural. It's pro you're probably going to use the most anyway. And then you don't have to have loads of colours in your arsenal. Then you spend less money, save money. I believe in saving money. I'm a Yorkshireman. When I ever come up on the lottery and I buy my uh, villa in Spain or the Greek islands or wherever. I'll be neg negotiating hard, no matter how much money I've got, <laughs> to get the price down. <laughs> Second nature to we Yorkshire people. Right, so, again, between the two fingers like that, and wire in the bottom. I'm using a 28 gauge wire for this. It's very rare I use anything big, thicker for leaves. It's generally a 28. If I'm doing something like ivy then I might use a 30 gauge wire. It just depends because they're very lightweight and they're very small but unless I'm doing a really big leaf that does need a stronger wire then I would normally use a 28. If you go for something like, I don't know, Monstera Delicosa or something like that um, then you will need a thicker wire because it's a much bigger leaf now that's come out a little bit I'm just going to take this out and I'm just going to show you something else now 
because if you have trouble getting wires up grooves and things like that there is another way that you can do it it's called lick and stick or that's what Alan Dunn calls it and what you do is you start off with a small ball of paste roll it into a sausage onto your wire don't forget to put glue on depending on which paste you use and if it's sticky you don't need it but if it isn't sticky then you do need some glue on your wire up your so you leave a bit of wire showing at the top roll it onto your wire until it comes past the end you only need a thin piece of paste on for this then just take any excess off at the top there just make sure that the wire can't come out of the top and then what you do then is a tiny bit of glue down the centre of your leaf like that pop the wire on with the glue on it like that onto your pad I sometimes forget when I'm doing these demonstrations that there are other ways of doing it and particularly people that haven't done it before and they're not sure or they haven't got the tools then there is usually you can find other ways of doing things thin your edges the same as normal same as that that's got the wire in it so we're just going to do that then you want your vena always have the back of the vena down that's going to be the uh, that's it looks like a front but it's actually going to be the back is that your vena is the back to front for whatever you're doing so wire into your vena make sure you've got your vena the right way up make sure that's central press down and you've got your vein in, in your leaf there. I've gone a bit offside, so if it does that, just go back in again, just centralise it, pop your vein back on. Anybody that knows me, if, if I make a mistake, I carry on and show you where I've gone wrong and what you can do to correct it if necessary. So that's that one done. Now the one that I've done with the lick and stick method, that part wants to go down into the bottom of your vein so this one's a bit cockeyed because it's got a ridge up the middle there I know but that's going to disappear in a second when I put this on put your top on to your vena press down and then bring your leaf out and there we are that's disappeared into there pressed it into the thing shape it and then into your foam like that I'll just move that out of the way so that's the leaves get rid of the paste so then we get on to colouring and assembling now because these are a white flower uh, as I said before I'm going to use a luster dust for this now there are quite a few different whites that you can get they're not all the same uh, if I can see where I've put it here uh, the white that I've used for this is, and I've lost it, it was right in front of me yesterday, what have I done with it? Doing my usual trick of losing things. Got that many colours, oh, it's, no that's not it. Oh there it is, no, typical line, we don't want that, not yet anyway. We do want it, but, uh, oh. Bear with me a second, I'm just going to stop the video and then I'll come back and with that. Put the wrong lid on the wrong pot. So the tropical lime that I thought I had was the uh, white colour that I wanted, uh, which is actually icy white that I'm using from Edible Art. Now they do other other whites, if one, some that have got, I think this has got a bit of a sparkle in it, how's that one? Oh, it's one of the others, but there's quite a few different whites in their range. They've got a very good uh, wide range of colours of uh, edible art. So, um, if you do want to go and have a look at their colours, it's um, edible art, and it's spelled edable. Uh, that's uh, the three mice, 
and uh, it's edible art world of color dot co dot uk is their website and uh, they're very good there so tell them I sent you tell them Terry from terrific cake design sent you and they'll know who I am right so don't mean you'll get any discount though <laughs> but if you go to any of the shows if you're in the UK and you go to uh, um, Cake International they're usually there at the front anyway so uh, I'm sure that a lot of people have been there because people get carried away with the lovely, lovely colours that they've got so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, dust these petals. I'm just going to do one and then I'm going to switch off and come back again uh, while I dust all the others because you don't want to watch me dusting loads of petals. So I'm just going to dust two just to show you because there's a slight difference between the two petals that I'm doing here. So again white, lust to dust, dust all over like that you've got a good covering and all over the back That's a soft one that I've just done. I just realised it wasn't one that would set, but it is setting is that. So uh, just pop that back in there for a minute and get another large one out that is definitely dry. That's definitely dry, is that one? See what I mean? When you've got them all together, they look the same until you pick them up and you realise that uh, you've only just made them and they're a little bit too soft. So you can tell when they start going out of shape that you've picked the wrong one up. Right, so we'll do those, and then what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do the centre. I'm just coming back to this centre that I've done here. The petals are just dropping back a little bit, so if you just readjust them a little bit. And what I would do is now is to turn the wire upside down like that, and then put that into your dry foam so it dries upside down. I do that with roses so that they don't drop back. What I'm going to do with the centre part is I'm just going to dust all over it with the white. And on the backs. that done pop that back to one side and then I'm going to come on to the green now the green I'm using for this is called um, tropical lime it's a very very light color I use it quite often if I'm just doing the tips of uh, leaves and things, petals and things like that because if you go too dark with the green it can look false if you know what I mean we just want a hint of color so I have another brush, a uh, green brush that I'm using for that, I'm using for light colour. So a little bit on your brush like that, off your brush. Don't want a lot of colour on for this because you're only going to do a tiny bit. And what you're going to do is just catch it right at the very base, like that. Turn it over, same on the back. Same with the smaller one. And then with the larger one, on one side, I'm going to dust down the side. So I'm just getting it so the wire is facing away, so I know which side it is when I come to do all the petals. And just go down the edge with just a little bit of green like that. And then turn it over and do the same on the back. Like that. So that's those. And then the centre that you've done, I'm just going to catch the very base there with just a little bit of this green. So if you look at the picture again, you can see that there's just a little bit of green around the bottom and a bit of green on the edge of the petals there. So that's what I've done. Just 
put that to one side to dry. So I'm just going to uh, switch my camera off and then I'm going to get all my other petals dusted and come back. Hi everybody, back again. So uh, I've done all the colouring on my petals. So what I'm going to do now is to do the leaves. And I've got a couple of leaves here that I can do. That have already dried. And the colour that I'm using for these, because I wanted a quite a dark colour, is uh, Rainforest from Edible Art which is very dark green. I'm not sure whether it's the darkest, but it's the darkest one I could find because I have a lot of colours to go through. And what you need to do is to dust all over your leaf with this. And like then, like other leaves, turn it over without putting any more colour on your brush and give it a waft over the back because the backs of the leaves are always a lighter colour to the front. Let's get some of that loose dust that's come off that just all over. These are just very plain leaves so there's no shading or anything else needed on these sort of leaves. The uh, veining on the leaves makes them look different but they are basically a flat green colour. Right so once you've done that now we need to get a very high gloss on these and uh, if you haven't got the uh, glaze then you're going to have to steam them a lot of times but you must make sure that if you do it that way that you um, let them dry fully in between so it's going to take quite a long time to do that to build up the, gl the gloss on these leaves because they are very very shiny so what I'm going to do is I'm going to glaze all over the leaf with the glaze give it one coat and then set that, set that to one side to dry. Now they do dry fairly quickly do these. So you just need to leave it a few minutes to, uh, to dry off so you get a... you need that to set before you put any more on. Uh, I have got some here that are already glazed like that one. I've already put another second coat on this but what I'm going to do is I'm just put, going to put another coat on that. Just to show you what I mean on top of the previous glaze. So you get a really really shiny effect because the first coat although it's quite shiny with it being full glaze uh, won't be shiny enough for this particular leaf because they are very shiny. Don't forget in between to clean your brushes when you've used glaze so straight into I just keep a bit of isopropyl in another separate container just for cleaning my brushes you see it's a bit murky because it's had all sorts of colours in but that cleans all the varnish off the brush and any colour that your brush is picked up as well I'll just pop that to one side so I'm just going to leave those to dry and what I'm going to do while those are drying is I'm going to assemble the flowers. So what I need first of all is some dark green tape because they, they've got dark green leaves and everything else and you're going to use a dark green tape. So go by the sort of variety of flowers that you're using. If it's a lighter coloured flower then you'd use, like I've done with some of the others, you'd use the Nile green which is a much lighter green. And with my trusty cutter I'm going to cut that in half. If you want these go to um, a sugar craft shop that sells gem products and they should stock these and these are really handy to use I think they're about 650 something like that it might vary depending on where you're shopping and then you can pull that through it's just a normal razor blade inside you can replace it by just buying normal razor blades to put in them uh, but they are really good and if you go to a sugar craft shop where they actually do flowers and things like that and they know what they're talking about they'll be able to explain about the blades how you can replace them and turn them over you get four sides to them uh, but I'm not going to go into all that today because the object of the video is to show you how to make this flower so first of all I'm going to start the tape off underneath there so you just stretch it find out which is the sticky side that's stuck to my finger on the other side to turn it over bring it round and roll it in like that so it's right underneath your flower 
I'm just going to turn my camera up a little bit because I do tend to go off camera when I'm doing this a bit so I'm going to come a bit this way it's more comfortable for me to sit here so I'm going to start off with the smaller petals so if you bend your petal down like that sit that underneath your center and then tape that in then your next one goes in bend your, pet your wire down underneath the other one so it overlaps sometimes they move around when you're doing this so you might have to place it back again go around a couple of times and then your next one if you just put your thumb underneath and then just bend your wire down just be very careful you don't break your petals when you're doing this I'm keeping them quite well up at the moment I will open them out once I've got them all in it's just so that I can see where I'm taping at the bottom and my uh, fingers aren't getting in the way and breaking the petals And again, how many have we got in? One, two, three, four. So that wants to go around there, that wants to go around there. Two more to go in, that goes there. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well and uh, get notifications when I upload new videos because if you want to see what I'm uploading then uh, that's the way to do it. Pop that in there and that's going to go over that one and behind the other one. Like that. Like on a rose. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape down now. Now if you've got any that are not tight, pull your, pull your wires down and get all your petals in nice and tight. That stops them from moving around. If you get all your wires and pull them down, make sure that they're all in tight. You can adjust them into position once you've done that. And tape down. The reason I'm taping down in between is because once you've got your petals attached your next layer of petals have got something to grip onto the wires have got something to grip onto so then we can open that out a little bit like that so that's how the flower goes like that then start your tape off again underneath and then go in with your large petals then and they go in between the first layer so where you've got two petals there then the next one goes in between behind Sorry about that, I had to turn my video off, so if I sound out of breath I had to rush downstairs because somebody came with a parcel to the door. <laughs> always typical when you're in the middle of something, they always manage to turn up, don't they? The most important thing we're trying to do here when we put these petals in is make sure that the petal is behind the join where you've got your previous two petals. Whether they overlap or not will depend on where the petals fall when you get to the outer layer so don't worry too much about that at the moment it's just a matter of making, getting them in the right right position it's just the same as when you're making a rose I pick some green up on the edge of my petal there If anybody's in the area, in Bradford area, Leeds, Shipley or anywhere like that, um, I have taken a lot of the flowers that I've made um, in my videos to uh, Tracy's shop at Cakes to Please uh, for if anybody wants to buy them then uh, they will be on sale there. So if you've seen anything that you like or by the same token if you bought anything there and you want to see how it was made you can and see the videos so 
just thought it was a bit of a waste really when I've got all these flowers going on two three four five got another one to put in there somewhere wherever it is that one there I haven't put any green on the edge of that I'm talking to myself again just ignore me Green. Don't know how I missed that, but I did miss one. Easy done. Make sure you turn all your petals around the same way when you put the green on one side here, because it's only on one side of the petals. Finished, I'll probably find another spare petal somewhere. You can guarantee when I, when I haven't found one that uh, it'd be around somewhere. And that wants to go in there. So that wants to go behind that one and in front of that one. and then you can tape down now I haven't put a calyx on the back of these for the simple reason that since I haven't got one in flower I have got one but it's very difficult to get to flower her gardenias so I, I couldn't tell you what the calyx is like and you can't see it on the picture so I've left it off but there again when you put some leaves behind it and you're doing a corsage idea um, it's not going to be seen anyway so I'm just going to come back to those two leaves that I did earlier on they're still slightly tacky but they have um, they have dried a bit I'm just gonna put another layer of varnish on them oh you can't see that just about on on the video I'm just checking to see if you can see what I'm doing just give them a, another go over with the varnish there we are and clean your brush always make sure you do it straight away because if you leave it your brushes will go stiff and then you can't do anything with them I mean it's not an expensive brush I don't use good brushes for doing jobs like this but uh, any cheap brush will do if you're painting on a cake that's a different matter you do need good brushes for that never use cheap brushes for trying to paint on cakes because they're not good enough right so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add some leaves behind so we'll start the tape off again and I'm going to put them again directly underneath the petals I think on this because two of them are still quite wet I'm just going to put one on here I'll put the others on later and just tape those in underneath like that and tape down Again, you can pull your wire down to make sure that that's in tight and it's not going to move around. As long as you've got your tape tight and you've pulled your wire down, that'll stay put like that. So the next step is, and I don't need to put those leaves in to do that, is what I'm going to do now is I'm going to steam it. Now in some of my other videos, I haven't done it with everyone, but I do steam all the flowers and the reason that you steam them is to number one set the colour and number two with anything like these luster dust and that it brings the colour up on in on the petals so it makes it much better and you get that sort of waxy look on all of your flowers so it makes them look a bit more natural uh, this steamer I've got here is a PME steamer and it's made especially for steaming cakes and things like that and it heats up very quickly as you can see while I'm talking it's starting to boil now and <coughs> just a note when you're steaming things don't try and do don't hold them in the steam too long you only want it to um, steam the petals you don't want to wet the petals there we are just get your flour in like that twist it round underneath 
on the top, underneath and out and that's all you need to set your flower so there we are so there are the gardenias we'll just get that other one again with the three leaves behind I've just put three leaves on the on the back of this one um, so there are my gardenias I hope you've enjoyed that and I hope you'll come back to see the next video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and if you want to see anything else that I've got um, go on to my list of videos there and there's all sorts of things from roses, um, sweet peas, um, I can't remember what I've done, there's that many of them, there's a lot of things on there including nasturtiums which I noticed nobody else has done, uh, I have done nasturtiums on there and uh, the last one I did was Cymbidium Orchid I, w I am going to do other orchids as well I've done two so far I've done Cymbidium and uh, what was the other one I did? Phalaenopsis uh, but I might do Dendrobiums and I've got various other orchids as well that I can do which are slightly different so I uh, hope you've enjoyed it stay safe and see you soon <laughs>